Brendan actually came to Korea to see me and then told me about his new venture called Oculus. And he's going to do a Kickstarter campaign the um, following month. It was actually in July that he came to Korea. And uh, he showed me the very early prototype of a uh, VR device. And when I saw it, you know, I'm usually high phobic, although I'm tall. And when I saw the first uh, VR experience, it was actually, I was actually floating in a very high position. I was looking down, it's like, holy, this is so friggin' scary. Yeah, I was like fooled by the, the, the um, computer graphics that was presented in front of my eyes. So I realized this is a very uh, new experience that I never had. And it would be very cool to actually make something as a you know, commercially viable product. It is not difficult to create virtual reality experience because we already have the right set of tools. Um, we have a graphical engine, we have a camera rigs that creative talents can actually use to create virtual reality experience. It's not really you know, different than the, the current tools. They're used to using all these tools. But creating a compelling VR story is going to be very challenging because in the past, people actually had a full control of the camera. So people who are making the uh, um, creative content they know what to show and they know what to say through this um, storytelling. But with the uh, virtual reality where audience has a full control of the camera, now you have to reinvent the entire storyline. I think I can compare with the, uh, the, the smartphones. So when smartphone came out in the year 2006, a lot of developers were puzzled to, to fully understand the potential of the user interaction between human and the touch screen. So, Actually, it took about a good two, three years for content creators to figure out how to make a compelling content on a smartphone. For virtual reality, it's going to be the same thing. The most challenging part is how to create compelling VR you know, um, content because it is the, the designing is completely different. And also another challenge is probably hardware ergonomics. Um, wearing something big over your head, it's not going to be very pretty. You may look geeky or a little nerdy too, right? It's going to ruin your hair, it's going to ruin your makeup. I mean, that's not going to be a pleasure experience to wear them outside. So for, in order for VR to reach the critical mass, there's a hardware problem that we have to solve, and then there's also a software content problem we have to solve as well. My company name is called Volet Creative. It's a French word meaning take off or to fly. Um, Volet has is, is, is been created um, to use the uh, artificial intelligence and virtual reality technology to collect personal preference data, which is going to be used for uh, targeted advertisement. There's about $600 billion money spent every year for advertisement space, and a lot of the money still goes to uh, TV ads or radio ads or magazines or um, newspapers. Um, but people are looking for a solution where they need to send a targeted message. In order to send a targeted message, you need to, you need to have a personal preference data. Now, I want to know what you like to drink, what you like to eat, what you like to see, what you like to do during leisure time. That information normally is stored among your friends and family, but I like to use artificial intelligence girlfriend to actually collect that information. So I'm using a, a graphical interface, <coughs> creating a virtual model. It can be a man or woman, and then have an AI built in it and engage with the human proactively to understand human's preference. And then later on, use that data to send you the information you want. The kinds of the metrics that brands and agencies really need to focus on looking at new markets is obviously the size of the market. So every um, brand specializes in its demographic. You need to understand not just how that demographic stands today, but how it's going to change. That's the hard bit. Uh, because of course, companies, the big companies are looking three, four, five years ahead to figure out where they need to be.